GOP presidential candidate Newt Gingrich is a blasting President Obama for that apology that he sent to the Afghan president for the burning of those Qurans by NATO soldiers. Hours after the apology, uh, a person who was wearing an Afghan National Army uniform killed two U.S. troops based in Afghanistan. Newt Gingrich says Karzai is the one who owes us, the United States, an apology for the shootings. Is this going to be part of the narrative as we move forward in the Republican primary race and the general election? To talk about it, Republican strategist Matt Kobiak is with us this morning. Also, Democratic strategist uh, Marjorie Clifton is here. And political reporter from Roll Call, David Drucker. Let me start with you, Matt. Um, the, the first thing I thought of when I saw what happened was that this could end up being a political football right back here because any time there's any conciliatory language that goes lobbed overseas, it becomes an issue here. Is this going to is this going to stay within this week, or is this going to play out right through till November? My sense is this is a one week thing. Uh, this plays into the theme that Newt Gingrich has been putting forward throughout this campaign that Obama goes around the world apologizing for America. Uh, this is a situation where tensions were high. Uh, you had an unfortunate incident that America has apologized for with the Quran burning. Uh, you also had these these two American soldiers uh, right back to back. Uh, look, this is the kind of thing that Newt Gingrich is going to put forward if he is the nominee. I think that's an unlikely scenario. But uh, this is the kind of thing that you do if you're talking to the base. It's not the kind of thing you choose, that you do if you're talking to independent voters. And once we have a nominee on the Republican side, you're going to have to switch your focus from well, talking to the base to talking to the middle. You know what? Let me, let, I don't know. Uh, Marjorie Clifton, weigh in on this because there is a lot of shift in, uh, in feelings towards what's been going on overseas, particularly in Afghanistan and post-Iraq. I'm wondering if more independents and even Democrats might start to agree with this, that it's, it, they're tired of, of having to apologize for anything, especially Especially when two U.S. soldiers were killed, this was not an intentional burning in any way. This was not something to try to inflict. This was an accident. It might have even have been a mistaken uh, communication. Uh, soldiers who were just unable to actually read the language on the books that they were disposing of. Well, but I think that um, you've seen in both Republican and Democratic uh, administrations apologies on behalf of bad behavior by American soldiers. Perception is everything, and that is an in international and domestic politics. And in this case, it is a perception issue about uh, the United States. And so I think that, you know, the move was right. Who could have predicted the, the killing that would later happen? Uh, I think that Republicans are going to be hard-pressed to actually win on international politics in the coming debates, given all that's happened over the past year. I think Obama's got a very strong state, especially with Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State. We've had a very strong showing. So. I, I don't, I, again, I think this will be an issue that will pass over quickly, and uh, again, Gingrich blowing smoke, I don't think he will be the nominee, so I think it will be a non-issue. Well, since you brought his name up again, I want to actually play that soundbite so everybody can see the tenor of, uh, of, of how he brought this up, and David, I'm going to come to you right afterwards, but take a look at it. This is Newt Gingrich on the stump yesterday, essentially blasting uh, President Obama for sending that apology, which was hand-delivered by our, uh, our uh, staff over there, the embassy staff. Um, to to the president of Eflo. President Obama surrendered twice today, and I think it deserves to be brought to the country's attention. There seems to be nothing that radical Islamists can do to get Barack Obama's attention in a negative way, and he is consistently apologizing to people who do not deserve the apology of the president of the United States. Period. So, David Drucker, um, on its face. I could see a lot of people getting pretty revved up about that, agreeing with Newt Gingrich, but what Marjorie just said also rings true, and you have to have a bit more of a memory to appreciate the list. I'm going to just go over a few things that, that uh, President Obama has been able to do during his term. He wiped out Osama bin Laden. He got rid of Anwar al awlaki in Yemen. Uh, he played a huge role in the ouster of uh, Muammar Gaddafi in Libya. And then on the far right of your screen, you can see Hosni Mubarak of Egypt. Of course, we didn't have any military um, incursion there, but there was a strong diplomatic uh, pressure put on that Egyptian president to step down, and of course, that's exactly what happened. So, David, are Newt Gingrich's comments fair, or are they sort of in a vacuum? Well, I don't think there's anything necessarily unfair with them. I think the question is, are people going to agree with him on a large scale in a general election? And I think that depends on whether or not the American people end up souring on President Obama's uh, foreign policy leadership. 
For now, they appear quite happy. You look at all of the polls, the president's much weaker on domestic issues, and he gets rated quite positively on foreign policy and, and national defense issues. So why would Newt do it if he's getting good ratings well, on foreign policy? He, and that list I just showed you is just a small Newt one. Right now, because Newt right now is running for the Republican nomination, and Republicans mm -hmm. are rather unhappy with the president's leadership on this front, and it's the kind of thing that is going to be... Yes, Republicans. They're yeah. not happy. That's why you saw in your debate this yeah. week uh, the president get blasted by all four candidates. It was one of the, uh, it, well, I'd say three out of four, not Ron Paul. It's one of the areas where the main competitors tend to always agree. They all agree that President Obama's leadership on foreign policy and national defense has been troublesome. Now, the world is volatile. Things could change. And if they do, this could be a sort of death by a thousand cuts issue that could be brought up again. But for now, it's a one-day story. Nobody's going to care. Not about the event, but about the apology in the letter. Yeah, yeah. I certainly uh, have heard a lot from Ron Paul uh, in the debates and on the stump about uh, bringing all troops home no matter what, no matter what we leave behind. But I always, I've always been curious as to how you can get past that graphic that I just put up there with all of those successes and think that foreign policy hasn't had some success over the last couple of years. But you are right. It is a Republican <laughs> primary. All right, Matt and Marjorie and David, stick around because we're going to talk to you in the next hour as well. And we also want to remind our viewers not to miss our special live coverage of the Michigan and Arizona primaries. Tuesday, starting at 6 p.m.